Okay, so this is our repertory tutorial, and today we are talking about how do we translate the language of a person into the language of the repertory. Kent used words that made sense for Kent, and he did it a hundred and something years ago. And the words that our clients use now are different. And so if we need to translate what somebody has said to us into the language of the repertory, we have to get good at figuring out what do they mean. Hi, Saula, welcome. All right, so what we're going to do today, everybody got your repertory handy? Have repertory will travel? You can, I, you can use Kent's, you can use any repertory that you have handy. Um, as long as it's in that format. If you're using one like the Murphy's repertory that's alphabetical, you can still use it. You're just going to find things in completely different sections and there's, he's got quite a few different arrangements of things. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the repertory and we're going to start with a client who has said to us, let's say that we're all sitting around in a class, and this client has said to us, I just can't handle the heat of summer. Okay, I just can't handle the heat of summer. So what do we need? What do we need? What is that person communicating to us? Aggravation from heat. I just can't handle the heat of summer. Okay, so if we're working with the theory of aggravation from heat, which is good, then where are we going to find that in the repertory? Ah, Dot says, I would ask, tell me more. Because what that one person means might be different than what we might think. Okay, well, so let's start with exactly where we are. Let's look at generalities, as Salo has suggested, and where are we going to find that? I can't stand the heat of summer. What are we going to look for in generalities? Now I'm going to use Kent's repertory here, but you can use whatever one you want. And so if we go into generalities, and let me, actually I'm going to, doo -doo -doo. let me pull that up here and I'll share my screen with you. Here we are in generalities, and what are we going to look for? Heated becoming, okay. All right, so we've got heated becoming. This is when somebody gets warm. Now, we're going to find rubrics in here or remedies in here for people who are aggravated by being in a hot environment. We're also going to find rubrics in here, remedies in this rubric for people whose bodies generate heat or people who feel over warm on exertion or people who there's going to be a lot of different things in here. We can we shouldn't be surprised to see some remedies, antimonium, crudum, kali, solve things that are aggravated by heat. We see Nat Muir in here and one of the big keynotes from Nat Muir is aggravation from the sun. Somebody could get over warm from being in the sun. Okay, so generalities, heated, becoming. What else? Are there other suggestions? What about heat flushes of? The client didn't say that, did they? 
That was not part of what was communicated. I cannot handle the heat of summer. There was no comment here about flushes of heat, right? Yeah, so I don't think that one's gonna be an issue. And if we look at the subrubrics here under heat, there's heat sensation of, is that what's going on? That somebody in the summertime, they have a sensation of heat? Maybe. So that's a possibility. We can grab that. Does Kent have other options for us? Like maybe generalities summer. What's going on in the summer? Somebody's worse in the summer, which could be that they are worse in the summer because their skin erupts in the summer. So sometimes people tell us something that's very simple. I can't handle the heat of summer. Are they irritated by heat in autumn? Are they irritated by heat in winter when they're, you know, maybe they come in from outside and they're standing right by the wood stove? So this is where we begin to learn that what seems like a really straightforward symptom, not so straightforward. And for those of us who are trying to differentiate this, maybe one of the best questions that we can ask is, can you give me an example? And so let's say that this person who's talking to us about, I can't handle the heat of summer, we say, can you give me an example? And the client says, yeah, when I'm sitting in Arizona, I have to go visit my family and they live outside of Phoenix. And when I'm sitting there and it's 120 degrees outside and I'm in the car and you first get in the car and you turn on the air conditioning, but the car is like a little oven. I cannot stand it. It feels like I'm going to suffocate. It feels terrible to me. And so you say, okay, okay, that's really hot. You get in that car and it's, you know, it's, if it's 120 degrees outside, it can be 150 inside your car. So that's really a lot hotter than anything a normal person would be exposed to. And so then if I were sitting in San Francisco, I would say to the person, do you have any problem on a sunny day in San Francisco? Every once in a while in the summer here, we have a day where it gets up to be 90. Oh no. No, that's not a problem. Well, what about if you went on vacation to Hawaii and it was hot and humid? No, no, that's not a problem. It only ever bothers you in this trip to Arizona that you do every summer. Yep. Okay, so now how big a symptom is it for the person? How common is it for somebody to get in a car in a 120 degree sunny day and really feel the heat. It's common, 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 common. So does the rubric of aggravated, heated becoming apply? Yes. But is it going to be super characteristic for that person? Maybe not so much. Now, in that case, heated becoming is a great choice. Are there other choices? What other words were ways that Kent described heat? Any ideas about that? How about generalities warm aggravates? Becoming warm in open air 
aggravates, warmth of bed, aggravates, warm room, aggravates, warm wet weather, aggravates, which definitely would not be the case in Arizona. Okay, so sometimes we have to be flexible. The client didn't say to us, I have a hard time with the warmth of summer. They, had the, they said, I have a hard time with the heat of summer. And so in our minds, we have to start saying, what are all the synonyms of heat that might show up anywhere in the repertory? Okay, so we could have warmth aggravates, maybe the warm air aggravates, maybe becoming warm outside in open air aggravates. And this is where just being aware that you can look in the repertory gives you a chance to know, oh, would I want to ask the client about this? What are the circumstances under which you really notice the heat in the summer and how does it bother you? Right? So warm aggravates, generalities, warm aggravates, that would also be an option. Now it would be fabulous if there was a rubric like generalities, heat of summer aggravates, but we don't have that. And so we have to sort of look around in the possibilities that we have. Now, another really legitimate question is to say, in what way does the heat of summer make you worse? And the client might say, I get horrible headaches. That's gonna take you right out of generalities into the head section. You're gonna be looking in head pain during heat or during summer or during heat of summer. Can anybody find anything in there? Can you look under head and pain? What do you see? Head pain. Do we have rubrics in there for heat? Yeah, head, thank you, Kristen. Head pain heated from becoming heated. And then there's a subrubric of that by a fire or a stove or from the heat of bed. So this is somebody who ends up with a headache because of that. All right, now let's say that the issue is not that the person can't stand the heat of summer because they have a headache. What if this is somebody who the instant it gets really hot in the summer, they start to sweat and they get completely dehydrated because they perspire so much. They've just got fluid running out of them. Where are we going to look for something like that? This is, and the client may say, I can't stand the heat of summer. And in their mind, what that means is I sweat all the time and I can't stay hydrated enough. But they don't actually say that because it's obvious to them because they know what it is. And so we can never assume when we're trying to translate the language of the client into the repertory. And again, the very best question we can ask is, can you give me a specific example? And then the person can say, oh yeah, there was this day where, and I sweated through all my clothes, and, or I got this horrible headache. This is what always happens when I get overheated. Or I got into this car in Arizona and it was super, super hot. Okay? So if the issue is perspiration, where are you going to find that? Okay. 
can you find a rubric for us? Somebody who's who's having aggravation. With perspiration in the summertime, it's so much. Which section are we looking in, guys? So the clients told us, I have aggravation from summer. Oh. Kristen says, I looked in skin and found nothing. Yep. So just in the section just before skin is perspiration. Yep. And this is where you find the discharge. Okay. So the issue from the client is when they are in a heated environment, the perspiration is so extreme. How are we going to find that in the language of the repertory there? And maybe the client says it's so much, and not only is it profuse, not only do I have a ton of it, but once I start sweating, even if I get into a cool environment, I just keep sweating. It lasts a really, really long time. So now the client has given us a specific example that lets us take this I am so much worse from the heat of summer and identify the specific language that we need for the repertory. Perspiration profuse, day and night without relief, great. And perspiration profuse actually has really good, uh, a good solid chunk of remedies in it. There's also another one in there, perspiration long lasting, that could also apply. Okay. Now, in here, he has, look for the rubric, perspiration hot and perspiration warm. What do these mean? What do those rubrics mean? Do they mean when the person is someplace where it's hot or warm, they perspire? Or does it mean, there, there you go. Kristen says, does it mean the perspiration feels hot to the person? Yes. When they sweat and the sweat feels warm or the sweat feels hot, that's what we're looking at here. Because if it said hot and it meant the environment, it would say like hot room or hot air or something like that. If it doesn't say anything else, then you can assume it's whatever that section is talking about. Okay. Now let's say that the issue that the client has, you say, so what happens to you? Can you give me an example of how the heat of summer is so difficult for you? And let's say that the client says to you, well, I just can't handle the heat of summer because it makes me so sleepy. As soon as I get really warm, I am just asleep. Now, where are we going to look for this? In the sleep section. So look with me. How are we going to find this? Somebody's saying that they fall asleep when it's hot, when they're in hot weather or when they become overheated. So help me find a rubric. What are we looking for here? Now we have to translate the language of the client into a rubric in the sleep section. What do you find there, Carol? What do you think, Salo? Are you guys able to see anything in there?
So if you look in the sleep section under heat, you find something really interesting. Can you find that? Get to that place in your repertory. Yeah, heat during in intermittent. Intermittent heat is everything about malarial miasm and it has to do with um, fevers. It never has to do with the environment. So that one's not gonna get us where we need to go. Uh, so Dots combined this idea with where we were and she's, what about sleep during perspiration? So we can have somebody who's sweating a lot during their sleep. That could be an issue given where we just were with this person. What about, oh, sleep sleepiness? Good, you are on the right track, Salo. So the client says, as soon as I get overheated, I fall asleep. So sleepiness overpowering, could that apply? What else? How else could we word this? What else might Kent have said? You guys are doing well with this. During the heat, this is also the during the heat intermittent. So there's sleepiness overpowering. This is someone who can't stay awake. But we don't have anything in here about heat. Now, one of the possibilities is that we could take this rubric, sleepiness overpowering, and we could cross it with generalities heat aggravates. Do you see the idea there? We could grab those two and say, well, if heat aggravates and they have overpowering sleep, this is the intersection of those two. But there's another rubric in here. What's another way of talking about sleepiness? Any ideas? What else is in that section? When the client says, I just can't stay awake. I just fall asleep. Oh, contraction um, of the eyelids, sleep yawning. No, it's, you're, you guys are close. Both of you are close. Drowsy. Drowsy doesn't assume that you're falling asleep. That's where you're not alert. So what about just sleep, falling asleep? What if we look at that rubric and all the subrubrics in there? Oh, sleepiness while sitting. Hmm. We'd have to ask the client, you know, does it, do you feel sleepy when you're lying down? Oh, you know, because sometimes clients will say, if I sit down, I'm going to fall asleep. Yeah. So that could be part of it. What we want is to associate it somehow with the heat. So look in the subrubrics here under sleep, falling asleep. Okay, good, Salo. Sleep, falling asleep, heat during. So if we're looking at this rubric and we pull it up, take a look at this. Look at the remedies that are on here. Some of these remedies are big, 
fever remedies and heat during like Cedron, Eupatorium perfoliatum. Uh, some of these are big flu remedies, Lacnanthus, Gelsimium, Rust Tox. Hmm. So that would make you think, oh, maybe these are remedies for people who are falling asleep with a fever. But we also have other remedies in here that would not be characteristic for this. So these could be people who couldn't stay awake when their environment gets very warm. And how do we know which ones are which? Isn't that the, the rub? We have to find out. And the way that we would know, let's say that we wanted to know for mesirium, falling asleep during heat, is this because they have a fever? Is this because they do, don't do well in over warm environments? The way to find out is to go look at the Materia Medica of Miserium in information about heat. You can pull out Clark's Dictionary of Practical Materia Medica or Vermeulen or Fatak or Herring's Guiding Symptoms or Hahnemann's Materia Medica Pura. And you look in there, what's going on with heat? What's going on with the person falling asleep during heat? And if it talks about when they have this raging fever, you know that this is related to fevers. It's not related to a hot environment. But again, if you took this rubric, my sleep falling asleep heat during, and you put it in a rubric set with generalities heated becoming, then the subset of those two, this is how the repertory is going to help you refine. Okay? Questions about any of that? So you guys did well with diving in. So this week, I want you to be thinking, anytime you're in a conversation with anybody about anything, let your mind roll back to, I wonder how I would look that up in the repertory. And if they say something general, like I just can't handle the heat of summer, let yourself be aware of, you know what, when they say that, I don't know what they mean. I just flat do not have enough information yet to even look in the repertory. And so only through specific examples are we able to tell what really does that client mean. And this is, you know, Jeremy Shear says there's something behind until there's nothing behind. And so asking for examples helps us to get behind. Okay, any last comments or questions? <laughs> okay. Thank you all. Have a fabulous day. For those of you who are joining this afternoon, we have the three-hour session today for pathophysiology from the neurological system. So feel free to dive in there or you'll be able to watch the recording of it. On Wednesday, we have chemistry with homeopaths where Mary Jo Aloy is going to be teaching about ions and how do nerve systems work with the jump from one nerve ending to another going to be interesting. All right, guys, and I will see you next week. Next week, we're going to talk about differentials. I'm going to give you two different rubrics, pairs of rubrics, and we're going to talk about how would we know which of these they mean. We're going to be working through the next several sessions all about how do I translate the language of the client into the language of the repertory. All right, guys, have a fabulous day, and I will talk with you soon. Bye-bye.